Hey guys, welcome back to Civil Learning Online. And today in this video, I'm gonna derive an expression for the equation for the crippling load when one end of the column is fixed and other end is pinned. There are basically four end conditions for the failure of the long column, and you will find a description uh, link for those video in the description. Uh, and with the through that, you can easily assist to that video. And without any further delay, let's get started. So moving toward the derivation of the expression for the crippling load here in the diagram I have shown that here we have a long column whose span is L which is uh, supported which has a fixed support at support B and the support A is pinned or hinge support and at support A uh, it is carrying a load P which is a crippling load and uh, same amount of the resisting force that is uh, resisting load B is also acting at support B. Uh, at support B and uh, here due to this uh, crippling load moment MA so at support A moment MA is generated this is support A and here we have mo uh, moment MA and similarly horizontal reaction H is also acting at support A and uh, as uh, our support B is fixed support so uh, mo here moment MB is generated at support B and uh, uh, for dri deriving the expression for the crippling load we need to write a short description about what we have done in this diagram and then we will derive the expression so first let us write down the first small description about this diagram and then we will for derive the expression uh, for the crippling load so here I have written that P is B the crippling load MB is the moment at support B MA and H are the moment and the horizontal force respectively at support A and now we need to consider a section xx at distance x from support b where the deflection of the column is y from the original position this dotted line represents the original position and due to this x of crippling load the b our long column is deflected uh, and it is taking the shape of the curve but here uh, from here it is straight and then it is curved because uh, uh, here the deflection at fixed support there is no deflection so here it will be only moment will be generated that is value is MB when you will wa watch my video uh, about the expression for the crippling load when both end of the column is fixed you will come to know what why the, the diagram is straight here and here it is uh, from the support and exactly from the support A and it, here the deflection diagram is a little bit away from the support B here it is straight and then it is curved and uh, now uh, we need to write consider a section x consider consider a section x from support b consider section capital x at support b uh, from support b at distance the section x x is at distance x from support b and the deflection deflection at distance x b y now from here we will have the moment at distance x so we will have here moment at x equals to e i times d square y upon dx square equals to now watch this step very carefully because from here the derivation is beginning so here the deflection is concave means uh, here the deflection value will be negative so we will have p this loading is p multiply by the perpendicular distance means p is perpendicular distance is y p multiply by y so we will have p times y and this horizontal load will be also considered here so plus h multiply by distance so we have considered that the uh, horizontal force this is and here we have horizontal force at support a and the perpendicular distance is this much portion and the whole span is l so we need to take the distance from this support a up to this point where the, we have considered the we are finding the value of deflection so we will have h multiply by whole span minus this portion so l minus x so now solve this equation we will have ei times d square y upon 
dx square plus p y equals to h times l minus x we have brought this negative p y on the opposite other side of the equals to then it will get negative will turn to change to positive sign so we will have positive p y now we will have d square y upon dx x square plus p by e i multiply by y equals to h by e i times l minus x this is our equation one so this is the differential equation and uh, now what we need to do is we have to you find we have to apply the general solution for this of this differential equation and uh, we have studied how to find the general solution of such type of differential equation in engineering mathematics third part so the general solution of the given equation one will be the general solution general the process for derivation de deriving the expression for the general solution is very lengthy so from uh, here from here uh, from, so for here in this video we will just use the value or and whenever it such numerical is asked in exam you either you can remember how to what will be the general solution of such equation that will be the better option so solution general solution of this equation is y equals to c1 cos x times root under p upon ei plus c2 sin x times root under p upon ei plus h by p times l minus x and let this be equation 2 now here we have got the general solution now the the thing what we need to do is we have to calculate this the c1 and c2 are our integration integration constants and we need to find the value of c1 and c2 by applying the boundary conditions as we can see as you can see here we have the fixed support at support b so here the boundary condition here we have the value of x c here we have considered that uh section x x from a distance x from support b and here if we are at support b then we will have here x equals to zero and at x equals to zero here at support b deflection is also zero so y is equals to zero and dy upon dx is equals to zero similarly if we move at support a then here we will have x will equal be equals to l because here x is increasing along x is increasing along the length so we will have x equals to l and y equals to 0 at support b now as we have here dy by dx equals to 0 so let us find the derivative of this equation 2 so differentiating equation 1 with respect to x differentiating differentiating equation 2 this is equation 2 differentiating equation 2 with respect to x we will have here dy upon dx equals to c1 multiplied by root under p upon ei and the derivative of cos will be minus sin x times root under p upon ei plus c2 times root under p upon ei multiplied by sign derivative of sign will be cos x times root under p upon ei and uh, close the bracket and uh, here the derivative of this h by p times l minus x will be positive h by p times derivative of l will be 0 and derivative of x will be minus 1 so this will get turned to uh, negative h by p so from here we will have a equation that is dy upon dx equals to minus c1 times root under p upon ei sin x times root under p upon ei sorry plus c2 root under p upon ei cos x times root under p upon ei minus h upon p 
so guys have a look to the equation i have rewritten the equation uh, after derivating the equation second and uh, we have two equations and uh, we have two very constants also c1 and c2 and using these equations and boundary condition we need to find the value of c1 and c2 so first of all let us uh, first of all what we need to do is we have to apply the boundary condition at support b which was x equals to 0 at support b we had at support b we had x equals to 0 and y equals to 0 so use this condition in equation second so using this we will have here uh, put at place of y we will put need to put 0 and at place of x we need to put 0 so we will have 0 equals to cos 0 will be 1 so c1 we will have y is equals in at place of y we will put 0 so 0 equals to c1 cos x multiple cos 0 degree will be 1 so c1 multiply by 1 plus sin 0 will be 0 plus h by p multiply by l minus x means l so from here we will have c1 equals to minus h by p multiply by l just bring this much portion to other side of equals to then we will have the value of c1 so c1 equals to h minus h by p times l now after getting the value of c1 what we need to do is we have to another we have to apply another condition at support a at support we have to apply another condition for the equation uh, 3 that is dy by dx equals to 0 so we will have here we have dy by dx equals to 0 at x equals to 0 we need to apply this condition that is dy by dx equals to 0 at x equals to 0 so we will have here in in the equation third so we will have dy by dx equals to 0 means 0 equals to and in place of x we will put 0 so sine 0 will be 0 and cos 0 will be 1 so and uh, this is h by p so from here we will have here 0 equals to and uh, sine 0 is 0 so c2 uh, times root under p upon ei minus h by p from here we will have uh, bring this h by p on the other side so we will have c2 times root under p upon ei equals to h by p so we will have c2 equals to this is actually root under p upon root under upon ei so h by p multiply by root under ei by p this is in division so multi uh, when it goes this side then it will be get a multiplication similarly this is in multiplication so it when it goes other side division and root will be root so other or you can also understand this that as root under p upon root on upon or root under ei so when it, it changes sign then root under ei upon root under p so whole can be written as root under ei by p so we have got the value of c1 and c2 now at support a we need to move as at support a now so at support a what we will have at support a we will have x equals to l and y is equals to 0 and we have already got the value of c1 and c2 so we will put this value in equation we have to put this value in equation 2 the value of c1 c2 and the value and this in boundary condition x equals to 0 and y equals to 0 in equation 2 let me show you we had the equation uh, this is our equation 2 so put this value in here then we will have here uh, 0 equals to minus h upon p uh, multiply by l times cos l times root under p upon ei plus h upon p times root under ei by p whole multiply by sin l times root under p upon ei now what we need to do is uh, we have to uh, get a trigonometrical value either uh, you can write uh, better it will be to write it in tan form so divide 
दिस बोथ द टर्म बाय कॉस एल टाइम्स रूट अंडर पी अपॉन ए आई डिवाइड डिवाइड दिस टू बाय कॉस एल टाइम्स रूट अंडर पी अपॉन ए आई व्हाट आई सेड डिवाइड दिस बाय कॉस एल टाइम्स रूट अंडर पी अपॉन ए आई एंड आल्सो डिवाइड दिस बाय कॉस एल टाइम्स रूट अंडर पी अपॉन ए आई so from here if this gets cancelled then and it will take the form of tan so we will have here watch very carefully we will have 0 equals to minus h by p multiply by l plus h by p times root under ei by p times tan l times root under p upon ई आई सॉरी दिस इज वॉट वी गेट दिस मच पोर्सन दिस गेट कैंसिल एंड हेयर दिस साइन बाई कॉस मीन्स टेन एल टाइम्स रूट अंडर पी आई एंड दिस इज एट इज एज इट इज नाउ वी नीड टू सिंप्लीफाई दिस सी हाउ वी कैन सिंप्लीफाई जस्ट ब्रिंग दिस ऑन अदर साइड देन वी विल हैव हेयर एच बाय पी टाइम्स एल इक्वल्स टू एच बाय पी टाइम्स रूट अंडर ई आई बाय पी टाइम्स टेन एल multiply by root under p upon ei so h by p h by p on the both side get cancelled so from here we will have tan l times root under p upon ei will be equal to will be equals to this l get multiply by root under p by root under ei so l multiply by root under p upon ei here guys this is what we get uh, l times root under p upon ei because this is we have l so and uh, this p is in division so when it goes on the other side it will get it will get multiplication and here it is in multiplication so on downward it will get take the downward position so division uh, so l times root under p upon ei and 10 l times root under p upon ei equals to l times root under p by ei now we need to find the value of theta and from there we will derive the final equation so we will have we had this equation so here we will have uh, the solution of this much portion we get l equals to root under p upon ei equals to 4.5 radian this is constant value so on squaring on both side we will have here l square times p upon ei equals to uh, 4.5 Square which will be equals to twenty point two five. Now, from here twenty point two five equals to two pi square. The value of we have twenty point two five equals to two pi square. So we can write it as uh, l square times p upon e i equals to two pi square. So we will have here p equals to two pi square multiplied by e i. By p times, oh sorry, we have p equals to, uh, then this divided by l square. This is the condition for the crippling load. Equation for the crippling load when one end of the column is fixed and other end is hinged. I hope you enjoyed this today's lecture. See you in the next video. Till then, stay safe and take care of yourself.